So look, let's dive in. Give us a bit of a background into your your journey up until this point. Um, for those that don't know, you were uh, you know you were a part of a professional A League club here in Australia. I want to get a bit of a perspective on your time there and and sort of what what's progressed you to where you are now. Yeah. So obviously starting at like football, like everyone does, and then uh, CCU opened up on the coast and mm. trial for that and got in and just then sort of slowly progressed through sort of divisions and with each step of progression up the division I feel like I progressed a lot as a player and learnt a lot yep. and I think getting that step then to an LA academy I progressed a lot and it was a really good environment mm. um, just the difference in sort of players mentality it was the main side of it with people being focused and wanting to be there yep. um, and then I think that first year there was the big year yep. and by the second year, it was sort of getting time to sort of want that next step of progression. Yeah. So then, sort of, you came along and yeah. Yeah. Well, then what um what led to America, right? Because you know I, I know you were uh, you were sought after by a few different people. I know you had some interest of going overseas, um, not necessarily America. Um, you know, alternate pathways in Europe, etc. Why, why America? What drew you into to that pathway? Um, there's two sort of key paths. I think America that really ties me was one being the degree, yeah, and sort of obviously football not being forever, yeah, and being set up so when football's finished, I'm still in a good place and yep. I've got that degree. And, um, the other part being being sort of having a few injuries over the past couple of years, getting to know my body a lot, mm. realised how important working on myself is as well as the football and the facilities that America has and offers can really help and develop yeah. my game even more. No, it's huge. Um, so look, give us a bit of an idea into your recruitment process. I mean, I was a lucky one that I got to recruit you and, you know, being a six foot two centre back, top speed of 36k, coming out of a professional club, made my job easy. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a bit of an idea about the different schools you spoke to, what sort of levels, um, just to give people an understanding of what it actually looks like when you get, you know, for us into phase three promotion and, you know, deciding on where it is you want to go. Yeah, so that part was pretty fun. Yeah. It was enjoyable. Like, I was obviously you sending through different people on WhatsApp every couple of days, talking to people, yep. and then sort of then getting the video calls and talking to different schools for different places in America, different levels. Mm. Also learnt a lot in that phase as well about the whole structure of how football is done in America and sort of seeing how it works. But yeah, What did you learn in particular that, that sort of stuck out? Um, I think the big part really was D1 isn't the best. There's obviously, it can, it can be the best, but like genuine, generally it's not the best. This is bigger schools mm. and it's not always the best pathway just because yep. it's D one. Yeah. So learning that the, the amount of different pathways at different levels in America and yep. obviously ending on D two, good school. Well yeah, you're, you're really headed well. to one of the, the toughest conferences within the D two landscape and going to the, the RMAC. What what stuck out with Regis? You know, why why was that the ultimate one of yeah, this is where I want to go? Because um, let's be real, there was 25 different interest in schools. That's not saying every every one of those schools made you an offer, but there was there was a lot of interest there. Yeah, so I think one part was the coaches. Yeah. Um, Tom and Taylor both seemed really good, really qualified, and really liked talking to them both, and I really liked their sort of philosophy behind their football. Mm. Um, the place originally really didn't matter to me. I was like, I don't care where I'm going. It's all about the football. Mm. But sort of looking to it, Denver seemed really good place to go and great city. live and great yeah great city so it's really keen to go there and then yeah there's always the there's a link with Regis uh, Cyril Regis who's a great ex West Brom footballer <laughs> um, as soon as, as, soon as we heard Regis it was gonna go there gonna go love it love it um, and lastly like what's you know it, it's a big first season for you you know I'm, you know, I'm hoping and I'm expecting that you're you're going to go in, you're going to play. What are, what are sort of some goals that you've set for yourself on a personal level that you want to achieve? Um, just, I guess, as I've said before, with each step that I've had, I've progressed a lot. It's just continuing that. Yep. This is the next step of, you know, it's 
be a higher level than other football that I've played. So just progressing as much as I can in that space. Mm. And usually I feel like I can progress pretty quickly and just making sure I continue that. And I think I could be, you know, on to better things after Regis. Obviously I'm gonna really enjoy my time there and you know, really just focus well on there, but I feel like it's a good step for me. Yeah. No, I, uh, I completely agree. But look, it's been an absolute pleasure, um, you know, going through this process with you and, you know, expecting big things this year. Yeah. Cheers, awesome. mate. Thank you.